So alright, today we're going to learn how to culture yeast from a bottle. The first step is obviously to isolate the yeast and purify it, make sure that it's pure. To do that, we need to prepare some agar plates for our yeast. So, let's get started. Alright, since I'm going to make 100 milliliters of solution for our agar plates, I'm going to measure out 10 grams of uh, dry malt extract. Now, since we need agar to make agar plates, I'm going to measure out one gram of fine Japanese agar. I bought this brand because, um, well, it was the most readily available to me. It was just in the uh, in one aisle of the Japanese supermarket. So, whatever works best. It's about right. Now we need to rehydrate this in some water for about 30 minutes. So the next step is to get our water boiling. Since I'm only making 100 milliliters worth of solution, I'm doing it over this little Bunsen burner. But you can do it over a stove, on a small pan, or, you know, especially a stove is useful if you're making larger quantities. But I'm going to use my little Bunsen burner here. So for a closer look at my Bunsen burner system, I have a regular low pressure regulator on a disposable propane tank, some vinyl tubing, or some uh, latex tubing, sorry, and then uh, a Bunsen burner that's just tested for liquid propane, and a stand of course. That's it. We're at about 94 degrees Celsius, so we're almost to a boil here. And then we'll be ready to add our dry malt extract. Alright, now we're boiling, so I'm just going to add a little bit of dry malt extract at a time. And you can see why I say a little at a time. Extreme propensity for boil overs here. So go slow. Now we've got all our malt extract added, and all we have to do now is wait for the hot break, just like we would in making regular beer. So this will take another 5 to 10 minutes of boiling, and then we'll cool and strain it. Alright, now we should be done boiling, and we're just going to strain it to get rid of the fine sediment and uh, hot break material. So, get your favorite oven glove on, and get your handy dandy straining device ready. I just have a funnel with a paper towel in it here. Uh, it's better to use a coffee filter if you have it because paper towels tend to soak up a lot of liquid. But I'm just going with what I got. It doesn't really matter.
Now this wort should be nice and clean for our little yeast. At this point, our agar has been soaking for long enough, so we will just grab it, squeeze it to strain out all the uh, excess liquid. let this come back to a boil so that the uh, agar can dissolve and we'll be ready to sterilize this and sterilize our plates. Alright, so now you can see the agar has dissolved and we're ready for the next phase which is sterilization. Up to this point we've boiled but we really haven't sterilized anything or paid real close attention to sanitary procedure. This is the point where everything will become sterile and usable for our yeast. So. So first thing, turn off our flame. And move this to our fancy autoclave, which is just a pressure cooker. Now, since we also need sterile petri dishes, So I've got my petri dish parts and my prepared work. Now I'm just going to close my pressure cooker. Put on the top. And wait for it to start jiggling. All right, now she's jiggling away, so I'm just going to uh, turn down the heat here. We're about halfway. And now it's just a waiting game. Wait 20 minutes for everything to sterilize. Right, it's been 10 or 20 minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the uh, turn off the heat there and let our stuff cool. Now, do not, I repeat, do not attempt to fasten this process of cooling off by removing uh, the top here. The reason is if you do that, everything will just flash boil inside and you'll have no work left. So, trust me on this one. Just wait five minutes till everything cools down naturally. Okay, now everything is out of the improvised autoclave. I've set up a sterile work environment here with the Bunsen burner, which provides an updraft, so anything that comes close to the flame um, just kind of floats upward instead of onto the sterile items I have below. I've covered the work the sterilized wort with a piece of sterilized aluminum foil so that it can cool a little bit before we actually pour the plates. So basically you just want to wait until the wort is cool enough so that when you touch the glass to your cheek it feels warm but doesn't burn. Then the plates are ready to pour. Alright, so now we're ready for the pouring of the yeast. So. Carefully undo the aluminum foil on the work. Quickly open the lid. Close. Same for the other. Quickly open the lid. Four. Close. Now we just have to wait a couple of hours for it to solidify. And we'll come back when that process is complete. 